again, we had no idea all these white kids were ordering records from the Randy Record Shop or from Ernie's Record Mart. And they'd have them sent to their grandmother's house. They'd have them sent to their aunt's house or a friend's house. Not to their own home because their mothers and fathers would raise hell with, with, with the fact that they had this black music coming in the house. Now, the Under the Sheets Club or the Under the Pillar Club is all over the country. I mean, people uh, have constantly come into this radio station over the years, the last 45 years I've been here. I mean, from as far away as Buffalo, New York, and Omaha, Nebraska, and stuff. And said, look, I grew up listening to you with a transistor radio under my pillow because uh, I couldn't, you know, my folks would kill me if they knew I had the radio on 11 or 12 and 1 o'clock in the morning. So you folks were very lucky because you hit that period where the fa- the big central radio, the family listened to as a group, the technology had moved so people could go off with the portables. I, I, I doubt they could have listened to you in the family setting, a lot of them. Oh, no, they, uh, it, certainly not. No, the portable, the transistor and uh, the small portable radio that was... Uh, electric even, uh, if they had a radio in their room at night that they could get under the sheets or under the pillow. Well, did you take a lot of abuse from, like, uh, white groups about, you know, like poisoning the youth or any of that kind of uh, thing? Very, that... very little, very little. Not enough to worry about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No. So you never had real threats or anything against oh, you? Oh, no, no, no. We had no marching or no threats. or. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think everybody loved it. Do you, in your understanding of the music now, with some years to look back, understand what might have made the difference of what was considered a beach record and as opposed from a more traditional R&B record? The word beach, I just sort of thought it was danceable R&B. I mean, that white kids could dance to or, or had, um, it was a, a little more pop music oriented as opposed to um, a John Lee Hooker or Muddy Waters or some of the deep Delta Blues guys, or Sonny Boy Williamson or something. I can't see him being a big beach hero. Mm-hmm. But it was the more danceable type stuff. No, no, I'm still selling the same old things I've been selling for years. Uh, hair straightener, pain. I've got a product, Stimulate, for sex. It sort of helps you with your sexual problems. And, uh, you know, we sold everything. Uh, Gene used to sell a Gruen watch uh, uh, for six ninety five for a for a, uh, a pawn shop down on Dedrick Street here in Nashville. And he'd say, give your wife a Gruen for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything was double on time. Right, right. Well, do you think a part of the attraction to the whites back then was the times that it was sort of stuffy yeah, socially? I think- thought they were sort of getting away with something. They were delving into the forbidden. Nobody in North and South Carolina, I mean, Mama gonna let them bring any of those records, those blues records that were double entendre and all that. Uh, or some of them wasn't double entendre. They just come right out and say what they were talking about, you know.